Hello and welcome to the Religious Studies Project Does the BASR Conference in video form. Uh, we're trying out a new format to see how it goes. Uh, so we're going to try and do a bit of a video diary at the annual conference this year taking place at the University of Chester. Giving you a bit of a, a slightly different way and insight into the world of the BASR and what Religious Studies academics actually get up to. Okay, well, we're really proud of this actually because we offer full bursary packages uh, to postgrad students and early career scholars every year uh, at the conference. Uh, for the last couple of years, we've offered six of these uh, really highly contested, really high quality uh, applications. Uh, lots of different departments uh, are covered uh, with the bursary students we've got. Uh, we cover the whole package, uh, we'll cover all of their accommodation, their food and their registration. They just need to pay for the train fare to get here. Uh, and we've had some really exciting papers from postgrads in recent years. And this year we've also reinstigated uh, the lightning talks. So we've had MA students as well coming in, just for little five minute talks, just to give confidence to people. Because BSR really matters about growing our younger scholars. And it works. In fact, the majority of the committee all have bursaries in previous years. So we'd like to think that proves it works. And it's a lot of fun. It keeps us vibrant. So we organised the lightning talk this year because we wanted to give very new students, particularly masters, taught masters students and first year PhDs who might not have had the opportunity to present maybe outside of their um, department to a kind of broader audience, just the chance to kind of lay out their stall and kind of say this is what I'm doing, mark out the territory yeah. of their research and also then to facilitate wider conversations uh, that they might have with each other. And when I go to conferences, I'm always really excited when I'm hearing new doctoral projects for the first time because that's what's changing the field, that's the newest kind of research. So it was important to just give a space. And although you might kind of say, well, why don't they just give full papers? And why are you kind of siloing off into a room full of lightning talks? <laughs> there is something about cutting your teeth with a slightly smaller, kind of shorter paper, I think. And uh, we wanted to kind of encourage that. And it was great to have a range of papers from Chester and from other institutions. I think you always worry a little bit when you're um, at an early stage in your research and um, you have all of these people that have studied it before and they've published things and you think they're going to be very scary. Um, but the conference has been very uh, welcoming atmosphere, in my opinion. So I think everyone's been really feeling quite a. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't get the impression that anyone's trying to catch you out. Um, and I suppose you're put in a position where you have to justify your decisions um, and spend your own research, um, I think it's only, only good practice to be able to do that. And the, and the questions um, that you often ask at conferences, it's quite a good tip to maybe write them down, and if you're developing your research, they're kind of points at which you think, okay, you know, how am I going to anticipate my criticisms? Are there any questions I've been asked at conferences that can perhaps just help me think about the likely kind of theoretical or methodological questions I, I might have to defend in my, in my work? So it's a good good idea to write down questions, because you often get ideas for kind of further research. So I'm Lau Bishop, I'm Senior Teaching Editor for Religious Studies at Bloomsbury. And I'm Sarah Gore, I'm the Editorial Assistant for the Religion List at Routledge. Um, so, uh, yeah, as, as Jonathan was saying, you know, we're here to show you what books we have. And I think just even looking at the books that we bring with us could be a helpful thing for you to do, um, to see, you know, what areas are we working in. Um, and, you know, where does your work potentially fit with the books that we're publishing? You know, can you see or identify a series um, that looks really interesting to you and um, that, that your project or your research might fit with? It's a great way to network and to look at the exciting research that's coming out to talk to us about the list, about the publishing industry as a whole. So, yeah, it's a good opportunity to come and see what other people are doing and where you might fit into that in the future. Yeah, and I think, you know, we, we are, we're not sales people, we are <laughs> editorial and um, sometimes marketing colleagues come with us as well. Um, but again, both editorial and marketing, you know, we, we know about the subject areas that we're commissioning in and that we're working in and, yeah, we want to talk to you. So. The socialising aspect is important. Um, one, because it's a networking opportunity. Uh, the academics that you get on well with are most likely the academics that you are then going to work with, either through publications or even on a departmental basis. Um, and if you're very lucky, you'll probably end up with a colleague like Dawn.
But oh, yeah, also like the socialising aspect is also important, not just for the networking purposes, but for your own well-being uh, at the end of the day. Uh, PhDs are kind of difficult processes uh, these days. And moments like this, well, moments like when we were back in the pub, I should say, is, yeah, it's a, an important opportunity to just unwind and, uh, yeah, not always be constantly focused on the work. Thanks for watching!